All right, so the major purpose of today's video is to teach you all about the partial credit on the AP exam. It's tedious, it's inconsistent, and the way you're going to learn the most out of this video is to pause it, write down your own answer for each question, and then compare your answer to mine and what the College Board lists as their criteria for partial credit, uh, you might be surprised. And at the same time, I'll teach you a bit about kinematics and kinematics problems. So what I'd like everybody to do is to pause and look at this problem that I'm looking down in front of me right now and predict what you think is the answer for the first part. All right, I hope you pause the video. Now, this first part, they're asking you Draw a free body diagram for each sphere uh, when half the time has elapsed. Very common trick on the AP exam. They'll say uh, T final divided by 2 or T final divided by 4 when one quarter of the time has elapsed. So there's a basic physics principle that they're trying to tease out here. It's your understanding that a object projected horizontally and an object that is dropped straight down vertically, um, there's no difference between the two. That vertical and horizontal components are independent of one another. Uh, another way of putting it is the famous bullet dropped versus bullet fired experiment. And you have to know that they hit the ground at the same time. And similarly here, you have both of these objects, because they have the same mass, they have the same force of gravity, acting down upon them. You must draw your arrows to be the same length. You must draw your arrows to be the same length. And here's just some take-home points which you can pause and uh, go through if you like. And the full credit given for this problem is that you have to illustrate both weight forces pointing down with equal length. That is the only way you get full credit for this part. Any component of that missing constitutes zero points for this problem. Now on to part B. They're asking you to sketch and label a graph of the horizontal component of the velocity of both spheres, sphere A and sphere B as a function of time. So you have your xy coordinates in front of you, and remember you have to graph both spheres. So go ahead and pause, write your own graph down, and I'll see you in a second. So about half of my students I've worked with make the following mistake. Basically everybody gets that sphere B has a constant horizontal velocity, but make sure you also have to make a clear arrow that illustrates that sphere A has zero horizontal velocity for the entire duration. So you must understand that little bit, you must illustrate it. And again, this is one point. If you correctly given both arrows, no credit of any sort is given if, you're, if you fall short. Now on to part C, which is the worst problem of the set not because it's complicated, but because I literally haven't seen a single student I've worked with get full credit for their answer. And it's completely not their fault. They omit key facts that to them and to me are rather obvious. But you must point these out. And I can't stress this enough. Um, pay attention to the details where it says, include references to your answers to parts A and B. So as you write your answer, keep that in mind and give the test graders what they want. So look this problem over. You're to write a clear, coherent paragraph length response to explain why, why the spheres hit the ground at the same time, even though one travels a different horizontal distance. So pause the video, write down your answer. And as a hint, there's five total points to this problem. All right, I hope you're ready for this partial credit nightmare. Ready? So for the first point, you have to mention that because there's the same force of gravity acting 
on the same mass, both spheres would therefore have the same acceleration. Now you might be tempted to point out the common physics principle that, well, all objects fall at the same rate under the influence of gravity uh, in the absence of air resistance. And you'd be correct, at least as your physics would be correct, but this is not what they want. They say, reference your answer in part A. So speak from that logic, not from, let me just put it like this, give the test graders what they want. Next point. Mention that horizontal and vertical components are independent of one another. Again, this is the reference to the answer that you brought up in part B. We're building a case using these points. And now the third point, which most every student omits, and it's not their fault. When I first wrote my own answer myself, I forgot to include this key point too. It's both balls have the same initial vertical velocity. It's rather obvious, but you have to point it out. Oh, because ball A and ball B begin with the same vertical velocity, uh, this is not going to affect their time traveling towards the ground. Has to be pointed out. Last point. Both spheres begin at the same height. Both spheres begin at the same height. Again, super obvious, but you might not think to point it out. So I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to give you uh, a sample answer that you can look over. And notice um, this is my rewording and trying to make it more clear of what the College Board says constitutes partial credit for each. Look over these carefully. And whether you see it in my book or you go on the official College Board website and you learn their partial credit, you absolutely must do this. After you do, oh, I don't know, like at least 20 of these solutions, you'll start to get a feel for how you need to write your answers. And I hope you do so because it'll greatly impact your score. And, well, thank you very much for your time.